What if Legendary Godzilla and Final Wars Godzilla swapped universes? Today, we find out. So, the very alleged overpowered Final Wars Godzilla, toted as the strongest for many years, and only now has that narrative become undone, thanks to people like me, of course. But what would happen if we put him in a universe against his most common and most worthy opponent? What if Final Wars took Legendary's place in the MonsterVerse? We'll go in chronological order since his debut in order to make this more interesting. Godzilla appears in 1954, and unlike in the MonsterVerse where he was pretty secretive, he begins to attack human settlements where he eventually encounters the Shinomura. Final Wars Godzilla is a lot faster than Legendary as covered in my multiple videos discussing their own battles. So if you have any questions regarding their level of power, speed, and durability, please refer to those older videos. We know that Final Wars' energy is able to burn things such as individual cells, which is very notable because that is how the Shinomura can regenerate itself. With that in mind, it's pretty easy for Final Wars to clear this opponent. And he gets a surprise in the form of another nuclear bomb to the face setting him off even more. As Final Wars continues his rampage, he's eventually tricked into following humans to Antarctica, where his weakness to cold temperatures is exploited and he is sealed for now. Flash forward to 2014. Godzilla's existence was hidden from the world for the most part after his rampages, but upon the two Mutos hatching, he somehow escapes. Now, while normally he would be rushing forward to try and destroy human cities. Instead, he decides to attack these two new threats. The male Muto he meets in Honolulu, and he's able to actually overwhelm the male Muto at first and cause it to retreat. Godzilla then pursues, seeing that this opponent is quite nimble in the air. The Muto's claws would be able to dig pretty deep into Godzilla's hide, but blasts of the atomic breath, which can be used more frequently, would scare off the Muto, especially since its EMP powers would have no effect. In San Francisco, the two meet, and the male keeps Godzilla busy for some period of time, trying to evade attacks for the most part. In terms of movement speed, Final Wars Godzilla would be just shy of the Muto, both being at least supersonic in travel speed. The atomic breath is much faster, and it's unknown if the Mutos could actually evade it. But chances are, they'll at least be able to evade certain death. Unfortunately, once the two join forces, even this much swifter Godzilla will be overwhelmed. He is able to deal with opponents that come at him in numbers, but that generally is when the opponents are significantly weaker than himself. As we've covered before, the high tiers of the Monsterverse are stronger than Final Wars Godzilla's base form. So with that in mind, he would be overwhelmed if anything even worse than Legendary was. But... Due to his experience in melee combat, superior skill, and much better ability to use the atomic breath in combat, I think he could at least hold his own until the female is distracted, in which case he can actually take out the male. If Godzilla uses his full power spiral beam, there is a good chance he could actually defeat the female Muto here and now. If not, the battle will continue with Godzilla eventually defeating her through his vastly higher speed, skill, and, sh and atomic breath usage. Final Wars wins, but is actually badly wounded, so he no longer has the strength to destroy the city. When the bomb explodes, he absorbs its radiation and regenerates. While he could go on a rampage, he is content to simply leave. The city is pretty banged up. Entering the Muto Prime fight, Final Wars is now hot on the trail of another threat, the Muto Prime. This enemy is one that he has not faced before, but is similar to the ones he just dealt with. So now, he has a better understanding of how they fight. Due to their superior physical strength, he will abuse his greater speed and range. It's been stated many times that the Muto Prime is slower than Kong, who Final Wars is faster than- This means that he can abuse his speed, and while he never really dodges attacks, this means he can land a number of hits before Prime can tag him back. Many of her special adaptations to hunt Legendary would also not really be effective. That said, her Earthquake Punches will deal devastating damage if they hit, considering they could send Monsterverse Godzilla flying, and when weaponized through her Sonic Screech, they could even shatter his dorsal plates. 
This would of course deal heavy damage to Final Wars as well, though perhaps not as lethal. Final Wars is not going to allow Muto Prime to start powering up and escaping. His best shot is the killer here and now, and since he's much faster, I think he could get the job done. Through barrages of brute force and an atomic breath through the mouth, he gets the job done. Later, in 2015, Godzilla is patrolling his new territory when he discovers the Hollow Earth. The Axis Mundi may not be canon, considering it's neither in New Empire or GBK, so we're just going to place the Ion Dragon here. Discovering this new habitat beneath the surface of the planet, Godzilla encounters many dangerous creatures, but ones he can pretty easily defeat. War bats, large skull crawlers, the ion dragon, viper snakes, etc. Things he can easily kill. But now that he is in the hollow earth, he gains access to a powerful radiation source, boosting his strength significantly. He then returns to the surface, detecting that there may be a threat. Well, again, Final Wars would normally be rampaging throughout cities. He detects something during his battle with the Muto Prime. This is the Orca. So Godzilla begins to try to find the Orca, no matter what. This leads to him destroying multiple cities, similar to GVK Godzilla. He doesn't find it until 2019, when he discovers Mothra's egg. Weak monsters that cannot harm him have actually been spared Final Wars' wrath, including, of course, Manila. Mothra does not pose a threat to him, so he may actually spare her life, which will come back to benefit him later on. Despite the fact this is not the Godzilla she knows, she'll have to learn to help him. Discovering the Orca's signal near Antarctica, Final Wars goes to pursue the fight. There, he encounters his strongest challenge yet, King Ghidorah. Still likely the strongest creature in the Monsterverse at this time, Ghidorah wakes up ready to fight. But this is not the Godzilla he knows. This is a much faster opponent than he's ever dealt with, and a much more aggressive one too. Rather than showing off, Final Wars instantly meets King Ghidorah with a blast of atomic breath to the face. But Ghidorah notices something. It doesn't hurt nearly as much as he thought it would. The two then engage in melee combat. And while Final Wars is much more skilled, Ghidorah's brute strength allows him to overpower Godzilla for a good amount of their fight. His speed is crucial here. Blasts of atomic breath continue to pester the Hydra. After being sent flying by a trio of gravity beams, the humans come in and start to distract Ghidorah. Final Wars then attacks in turn. Ghidorah feels pressured since he is surrounded and still weakened and decides to fly away. Godzilla pursues Ghidorah all the way to Mexico, where he snipes him down with a blast of atomic breath. In the water, we actually don't really know how well Final Wars can fight. The only thing we know is that he overpowered Hedora and Ebra with blasts of atomic breath and easily dealt with them. But they are significantly weaker than himself, whereas Ghidorah is stronger than him and also has quick charge energy beams, meaning that Final Wars would most likely have a hard time in this fight, and that's before the Oxygen Destroyers drop. Unlike Legendary Godzilla, Final Wars actually survived the original, much stronger Oxygen Destroyer in his own timeline. With that noted, he actually takes it much better, but Ghidorah takes advantage of the distraction and blasts Final Wars down, forcing him to retreat. But then, when he is recovering, he detects radiation in Legendary's old lair. In this space, he begins to recover from his wounds. When he is then nuked, once more. Though he is not a friend to humanity like the original Godzilla was, he is still helped because that he's the lesser of two evils. The only chance to stop Ghidorah. Ghidorah then arrives in Boston and Godzilla quickly pursues. Mothra also arrives helping Godzilla pin Ghidorah down to land many devastating hits. Punches, kicks, bites, and blasts start to push the dragon back despite his superior strength. And that power from the nuke is definitely helping too. However, Ghidorah still has an upper hand, especially when he too decides to grab a bite. Even if Rodan isn't really assisting Ghidorah at this point, he should be more than capable of holding his own against the two of them. This is a fight the likes of which Final Wars has not encountered before. An opponent stronger than him, more durable than him, with energy absorption, 
who can fly very quickly, and is also a proficient melee combatant. It's almost as bad as the Kaiser Ghidorah situation. That is until Mothra dies and powers up Godzilla with her own energy. With this, plus the nuke and absorbing energy from Hollow Earth, I'd say this very amped Final Wars Godzilla has what it takes to take Ghidorah down. Though it would be much harder than burning legendary Godzilla, of course. With that in mind, this amp would not be permanent. He would lose it, like legendary, also gets tired the longer he fights. Meaning that he would probably be weakened after the fight in King of the Monsters. He may or may not slaughter the titans that try to confront him after Ghidorah's death. He may be too tired to try to kill them at the moment, or he may decide to do so because of his fast aggression. I'll leave that for the audience to decide. Godzilla Dominion then occurs, and while he's not necessarily searching for a home, he does note powerful energies like the bond that Skyla was going to eat and Tiamat. Tiamat proves to be a difficult opponent, but I think she dies here rather than in New Empire. Final Wars is much swifter than Legendary, and this likely applies to Aquatic Combat too. He's got a better quick draw atomic breath. This likely allows him to avoid a lot of the injuries that Legendary took in the fight, and if he is injured, he will be able to feed on radiation should he escape Tiamat's grasp. Here, he rests and gets even stronger. Godzilla vs. Kong happens basically the same way. Since Final Wars is definitely more aggressive than Legendary, Project Mechagodzilla is enacted with more approval from the public and Monarch. And Godzilla begins his search, same as in GVK. This leads him into conflict with Kong, who has sensed the threat and has challenged it. Kong is physically strong enough to keep Final Wars at bay. He is a worse fighter in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and again, a quick draw atomic breath helps a lot. On top of this, we also know Legendary was holding back on Kong and treated him like a toy. So I think it's fair that Final Wars can defeat him, even if we didn't give him the power-ups he gained in the Hollow Earth. Rather than smirking at Kong, Monarch simply beats a hasty retreat. Briefly distracted by the ringing in his ears, Final Wars pursues Mecha Godzilla rather than Kong, detecting the ping from the Orca. Now we zip forward to the Hong Kong fight, where Kong now has the Godzilla Axe. The Godzilla Axe, when charged with atomic breath, could pierce into Legendary's hide, so I see no reason why he wouldn't be able to do the same to Final Wars, who's weaker. Especially since Kong is likely physically stronger than Final Wars anyway. This leads to a much more brutal and bloody battle between the two. Where Final Wars is actually the one being pressed in melee combat. But is much more skilled than Kong. And starts to get the upper hand. Especially when he starts using his atomic breath frequently. Although maybe you could say that Kong could start dodging like Jet Jaguar does in the short film. But with Final Wars' greater speed, he's able to keep Kong at bay. Unlike GVK, if Final Wars wins this fight, he's going to try to kill Kong, viewing him as a threat. Then he pursues Mechagodzilla, who starts to beat on him. While Mechagodzilla is near unable to hurt Legendary, its attacks can bypass physical defense, and he has a barrage of ranged weapons. He's also more in tuned with Final Wars' fighting style. The mech may be able to overwhelm Final. This leads to the thing with Kong, and the two begin to take him on. Since he teamed up with Mother, who he didn't know in his own timeline, I'd be willing to bet that he would begrudgingly accept Kong's help in this fight. With that in mind, Mechagodzel is still defeated, probably in about the same way, and the two then separate. Kong returns to the Hollow Earth, we move on to New Empire. If Skyla wasn't killed in Dominion, she's certainly dying here. Final Wars is faster and more aggressive than Legendary ever was. Detecting the threat down in Hollow Earth, Final Wars pursues. He gets a strange feeling. He was able to sense Monster X's presence in his own timeline, who was stronger than himself. So with that in mind, he may be able to sense Shimo's overwhelming power. So Final Wars 2 decides to power up. After Final Wars gains this immense amount of energy, he's become far stronger. 
This allows him to actually overwhelm Kong, even with his Beast Glove, since he was already faster than Kong, and now he's stronger too. But before he can deal the final blow, Mothra appears. His ally from King of the Monsters, Final Wars accepts her help and listens that Kong will be of use, and so backs down for now. They thus head to the Hollow Earth as a pack and discover the Scar King. He can tell that he is the threat and leads the charge. Unfortunately, nobody told Final Wars that Shimo uses absolute zero and he's already weak to the cold temperatures, leading to Godzilla having to dodge every attack Shimo throws in case he gets one shot unironically. With that in mind, his speed is crucial here, or he'll just die. Even with this supreme with this immense power, if he's frozen over, it's game. Kong is able to keep Scar Kang sufficiently busy, but Mothra has to save Godzilla a number of times. His greater speed, though, allows him to land a number of attacks on Shimo, who in the movie already seemed to be pretty easily interrupted and distracted. However, Final notices that he can't really do much damage. This thing is really tough. And the only reason he beat Ghidorah last time was because Mothra sacrificed his own life force to power him up even more. He's just barely able to keep out of the range of her freeze beam, too. He gives it everything he's got. But honestly, I think he will probably lose the Shimo here. If he gets the same sort of power up he did to beat Ghidorah, he could certainly beat Shimo, but that would require Mothra to die for that to happen. Which seems very unlikely to occur, so perhaps this one just ends with the Scar King winning. Or perhaps Final Wars focuses on murdering Scar King and just trying to evade Shimo. If he can do that, then killing Shimo doesn't really need to be a priority. And with that, we end this hypothetical. Either Godzilla loses to Shimo, and the Scar King wins, or if he and Kong team up to murder Scar King, then there's a pretty good chance that they'll wind up victorious.